send that down through the top of the ring terminal, bend it up so I can grab it with my fingers a little bit. And this ring terminal is going to go, you can see, these are the two holes that are opposite these two holes for the MOSFET, and here's the hole in the corner of the heat sink that will align with the hole in the corner of the box. So I'll send the screw with the ring terminal down through. Align it to the top of the heat sink. And I'll also see my other two holes come into line now. And I'm not going to tighten this down all the way just yet. Not until I assemble the MOSFETs. But I want you to see something else that's fairly important. Believe it or not, this really is important. Notice I did not assemble the ring terminal so that it was straight down from the head of the screw. I turned it a little bit to the side. And the reason I did that is because I'm going to take this, the, the end of that terminal, and I'm going to bend it straight up from the screw head so that I can assemble my two stiffening capacitors into the end of that ring terminal. The mechanical tolerances inside this case are very tight, and you have to be aware that there are certain procedures you will need to follow in order to fit everything in the case without short circuits. Next I'm going to prep my power MOSFETs. The first thing I do is I clip the two gate terminals. Now if you look at the power MOSFET, all right, the terminal to your extreme left is the gate drain and source. I clip the gate right about there to the case of the power MOSFET and I take the source and you'll notice on these MOSFETs You see how that they are molded, or how they are stamped. There's a wide section that's close to the body of the power MOSFET, and that is most evident with the drain terminal in the center, but also the, the two outer terminals, the gate and the source. And when I bend these, when I, when I clip it, I clip it where it makes the transition from thin to thick, and when I bend the source up, I bend it at that same location. I'm going to take my wire cutters, and I'm just going to grip it I could also use my needle on those pliers but I'm lazy right, and I bend it straight up so you end up with a MOSFET that looks like that Okay. You're going to see how important it is in just a moment why you bend it exactly that way because of the tight tolerances inside the case. And because I'm building a 150 amp, I'm going to do the same thing to my second MOSFET. So bend them both exactly the same way. I apply a small dab of heat sink compound to the back of the mo back of both MOSFETs, as long as I got it in my hand. Right. Now, I take my aluminum oxide wafers. Remember, I don't need very much heat sink compound on the back of these. So the divided up, there's none on my wafer yet. All I'm going to do is just take it and work them together a little bit so that I spread the heat sink compound between the two 
pull it apart and I now have an equal amount. of heat sink compound on both the transistor and the wafer. All I need to do now is just assemble it, flip the wafer over and re-squeeze it. Now I'm ready to assemble it to the case because I now have a layer of heat sink compound in between the transistor and the wafer and some heat sink compound on the top surface. time. See the small amount that I've applied there, right? Just work that together. Pull it apart. Have an even amount of compound on both. Flip the wafer over. Reassemble it to the back of the transistor. And a word to the wise, don't get any of this on your fingertips because it takes a long time to get it off. It'll smear over everything. Alright. Now I'm ready for my 632 by 1 inch screws that will hold these transistors to the heatsink and the bottom of the case. Again, each one of these screws gets a lock washer and a flat washer. And I'll send it down through the power MOSFET and just sit it in the opening of the hole. I'll line it straight and start the screw. Again, I'm not going to finish tightening these until I get all three screws into the bottom of the heatsink. If you were doing a 75 amp version with one power MOSFET, this would be the only MOSFET that you assemble. The other section would be empty. Okay, both of the transistors now are in there nice and straight. I'm going to finish tightening them down. Very snug. And now I'm also going to tighten the little ring terminal on the corner making sure that it doesn't continue to drift around as I tighten it. And there you have it. So now the only thing left here is to take that ring terminal end and bend it upward, straight up, literally straight up and down, just like that. <laughs> 